Ladies, gentlemen, all the above, none of the above, welcome back to the shop. I'm Dave. This is Power Wagon Restoration Vlog, episode 11. I'm going to be doing a deep dive into the restoration of the doors of the old Power Wagon, so stick around. You're watching Parts and Restoration. Boys and girls, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be working on this door. This is the driver's side door. I realized that in order for me to properly fit up the front end of the cab to the back end, I needed to have my doors squared away. The doors are going to serve as a point of reference to the fitment process of getting this put back together. If the doors are wrong, the fitment's going to be wrong. So before I proceed, the door's got to be good to go. Looking at the bottom here, you can see this whole bottom of the door is rotten out on this particular unit. The uh, hinge handle or the hinge piece, similar to this one, uh, was completely loose and falling apart. I've cut it out. There's a hole in here where this hinge mounted to, completely rotten out. So next step here is gonna be, I'm gonna cut part of this bottom section off to access the inside of this door. I'm gonna start fixing stuff. Okay, you can see my cut, one here and here. Now, I went across here for two reasons. One, I don't need to make these pretty across here. I only need to make it pretty there and there. This will all be covered and this hole already existed, so that kind of gives me a frame of reference. So this is out. Uh, as we can see here, we've got a crusty little panel here. I don't think it's uh, beyond saving, though. The bottom half of this definitely needs to be pretty much completely replaced, but uh, it's usable. And then uh, also, I've got good access to repair this inner, this inner structural member that had some rot in it right where the... Uh, door hinge attached. I wouldn't call it rot, probably more like uh, probably more like work hardening and breaking from just slamming the door for 70 years. Okay, well, I've dollied out all of the damage to the uh, door skin here, but as you can see, <laughs> this thing looks like I got hit by a shotgun. Um, this, uh, you can see there's a ton of pitting on this, uh, on this metal here, on this door skin. They make a replacement door skin for $125 from, uh, uh, what is it, Dodge of Central Michigan Classics, DCM Classics. Uh, I may just invest in that, $125 bucks to give me a pre, pre-formed panel across here um, that you know matches the proper crown that it's supposed to. That, that would probably be worth the money. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to work on this bottom panel over here, the inside of the door, and... As you can see, I've gotten it off the car. I've dollied out all the, da the, the dings and damage on here just to get an idea of what it's supposed to look like. And now I'm gonna use one of the, um, one of the, the donor truck doors that were in worse shape, more or less, to, I'm gonna steal some metal off this. Now, there's good metal in what you can see here. I've already cut out the damaged piece. That's all solid metal across here, solid metal on the inside. So I'm able to replace a lot of this bottom flange just, just straight out the gate. Now I've got to make this section forward. And uh, also, as you can see, there's some, well, you see it better on this side. There's a ton of pitting right in this front section. And if you hold it up to the light, me, there's some holes that go all the way through. So I'm gonna be using some of this good metal from these ribs to replace that. Okay, I've been hard at it for a while, taking a little pause to talk to you now. Um, been rebuilding this entire bottom flange, okay? So here's the original panel of here and all the way across. This is off of a parts, uh, the parts panel. This is some uh, uh, metal that I'm recycling from the back of the, the original cab. Here's a little scrap piece I had laying around. And so I've got a little bit of a line marked. I'm gonna be making a new flange that'll go all the way around to connect with the, um, with the parts trucks uh, panel right there. And so once this is all cleaned up, uh, we'll touch base again and then I'm gonna fix this piece right here. Was able to get this last piece uh, worked in. Now this was kind of an interesting one to make. Had to bend um, this little edge at an angle. This is actually like a change of, of height. And the original piece was completely worn out. This is actually right where the bottom hinge piece mounts onto the truck. Where is that little piece? There she is. Anyway, this actually mounts 
uh, originally with some rivets all the way through here, but because there's this height difference, it sits right in its little pocket, that's gonna work out really nice. But on this original one, it was completely, this sheet metal was just completely worn out just from, uh, I'm assuming, the flexion over the years, causing like a, um, a work hardening, which cracked this section out like as a unit. Anyway, nice brand new metal in there with the original flange. Love the way that looks. Many months later. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Parts and Restoration. It's been about a year since I've done any kind of work on the power wagon, and today I'm jumping right back in where I left off almost a year ago. I'm jumping back in to rebuild some of the internal structures that support the lower door hinge. Now here's an example. This must be a common issue on these power wagons doors. The metal just fatigues out from wear over time. Here's the bottom corner of the inside of the doors structure. You can see how these two pieces sort of puzzle together just like so. So I'm going to weld them back together and then I'm going to plate across this open section. So I can re return some of the strength to that piece. Um, this is not going to be visible anywhere, so it doesn't need to be pretty. It just needs to be strong. Ugly and strong? It sounds like your mother, Trebek. <laughs> okay, we got some uh, progress going here. Basically, patch that in, getting welded in on the front, going to weld it in on the back. I've also found a bunch of pinholes that I've kind of just filled with weld. This thing has a bunch of rot, and um, instead of just replacing this or, or fabricating a new one, which I don't really have the skill set for, I'm just going to fill it in and maybe patch a little couple spots in there just to make it strong again, like I said. Now to tackle these holes. Ooh, cinematic. Some quick setup notes, since this whole thing is like the completely wrong way to do this. So I'm just taking a piece of steel, clamping it in with this gigantoid clamp that I freaking love. And you can see the holes where they exist. I opened them up with some pliers, just kind of stuffed a needle nose plier in there to expand the hole to like solid or metal. And I'm just gonna plug weld those. Okay, here's that flange support. It's been drilled on the drill press off camera and it's just gonna be plug welded and then edge welded across that flange just to beef up what little metal exists left. Okay, plug welds are in. I've gone ahead and rounded this edge over with a hammer and dolly. And I'm just gonna go and edge weld that whole thing. And then I'm gonna just see if it needs trimmed off. And then as you can see, this inside bottom flange needs done too. Okay, second flange was welded in and this thing is done. And it is without question the ugliest piece ever produced in this shop. But my God, it is so freaking strong. I mean, this thing is absolutely rigid as can be. And, um, and I'm really happy with it, I, even though it's, like I said, you're not going to be able to see this. Now, uh, I did notice as I was going through that I had cut out, I had installed a new piece right here, but I had forgotten to put the flange edge on it. Now, here is the original piece, and I'm going to be replicating that flange edge. And what I've done is I've taken a piece of metal there, and instead of using a scribe or like a pencil or something like that, I just vice gripped this thing i clamped it with vice grips into the piece spray painted it with paint it gives me an exact edge that i can cut out carefully with some shears all right so there's the flange piece all welded in place uh i ran out of gas of course in the middle of welding that in so more gas coming and now off to the other crusty door so the bottom of the uh, passenger side door is significantly worse than the other one i've been working on and uh, this whole section is going to come out. I cut a line across here where I've got plenty of really good metal to reattach this to the door so I can get solid, strong welds on that. And then right now I'm working to disconnect some of these rivets and just get all of this nasty rotten metal out of there and replaced. Okay, well that was a bit more effort than I had expected. I found a couple additional spot welds that were concealed down there. And I've got this off. Now of course this door bottoms, the skin on this door is completely clapped out. Uh, I have a replacement that gets it a new section from about there down. But then taking a look at this interior structure, the part that you'll see in the cab. This one's a little bit worse off than the other one that I had done. There's not much left to work with. I do have this one section here that I can, you know, extrapolate this edge um, off of. And I also have the one that I've repaired that I can use as a template, which is probably the approach I'm going to take. Just look at all. Oh, man. They definitely did not paint any of the hidden surfaces of this vehicle because they just 
rust the heck out. So anyway, I'm gonna hop in there with the cutoff disc, zip, 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 all gone. All right, so I trimmed out the rot in this corner here and I've prepared myself a patch panel. Now, originally, this piece would be the um, opposite side um, on this door, so it's not gonna be a perfect fit. I'm gonna have to do some like fit up with this once the door's installed, but this is solid metal-ish, so I can work with that. Now, I'm gonna be indexing the piece in place off of these lines to make sure they're perfectly straight. And um, what, I, what I did was I made a relief cut right across here that allow, will allow me to push this old metal down and in. And so when I place this patch panel in place, I'm gonna line these two edges up perfectly and do a tack weld right on this corner and right on this corner. And then I'm gonna come in with the cutoff disc and just cut the rest of it out and push this in place. It'll be nice and flush. Get back to you in one second once we've done that. Okay, the corner's in, tacked up, and I'm pleased with it. And you know, it's nice and nice and straight, so that's good. Uh, now I gotta start figuring out the actual geometry of this bottom flange. And to do that, I have that door bottom chucked up in the vise, and I've applied a mask to it, which I'm going to remove and use as a template. If you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know my favorite way to transfer marks is with spray paint because you get the exact mark without any real error. And you know, as long as you push down hard, get a good seal, the ultimate move. Okay, we got this bottom piece cut out. Now, because these are mirror images of each other, all I gotta do now is flip this over. And so I've got my bit. Tack welds are in place. Uh, this is actually looking okay. Got the crown where I want it, got the straight edge along the right. Um, and it's just kind of, it's funny. I almost bought a replacement one of these. It was $300 for a replacement panel or like 250 or something like that. It was a lot. And uh, yeah, one day of sweat equity getting there. Uh, more tack welds. One eternity later. So where I left off about 14 months ago was these door bottoms. So job number one for the evening is going to be using tape to capture this edge profile. And I'm going to be then reapplying that tape over onto here, use it as a pattern to cut out this new edge in this giant piece of metal that I welded in. Tape didn't really work out, so I just clamped them together. Uh, clamping together didn't really work out, so now I'm on to plan C. I've got some uh, points here, and I'm going to be measuring and scribing. Off of that, transfer some lines, see if that works. All right, used a divider to get both of the proper widths on here and the bottom. Use the tape to bring them to a nice point based on their overall sort of angles there. And uh, now I'm gonna cut them out. All right, so that got cut out. Looks nice, I'm happy with it. Now I went to go fit it onto the door itself and I've got this inside structural member that's in the way. I've got a little bit of extra metal in there. Anyway, this needs to come out regardless, and it'll be easier to fit this thing up with this out of the way, so this is getting cut next. It actually needs to get reconditioned. There's a whole bunch of metal down on the bottom here where it hooks around that's long gone, so let's cut. All right, I got the door bottom mocked up into the actual door itself. Seems to fit pretty well along this edge. Here's the original door skin, so that sits in there nicely as does the uh, bottom inside bit. And even along here, the main thing going on here is you can see based on this door, the door skin there, there's a bit of an angle that needs to be matched and that needs to get matched into this bit here. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh yeah, much nicer. Got my driver's side door bottom here, inside door bottom, in pretty good shape overall, but I do have some of these pinholes now contemplated just leaving these alone and putting some epoxy or body filler in there but I do have some solid metal here from one of the other uh, donor doors that I had so instead of being lazy I am going to go ahead and patch that that'll be a much nicer solution so let's get to it all right so I've made two cuts so that I have a free corner that can be kind of pushed on to reorient that now the point of this whole cut and butt technique is when you put, when you get this cut, you can push this down, tack weld in the new metal, and at the same time, you're cutting out all the old ruddy garbage that you're getting rid of. So as I go through, I'll do a couple tack welds here, 
couple tack welds along the top, just in the top metal. And we'll start peeling out that bottom grossness. And we'll make sure the edges are nice and flush. All right, new metal is in place. Old metal is sort of hanging on by a thread here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. I'm just kind of popping this up, because there really shouldn't be, there's probably some tack weld that's sort of holding it on. And there you have it. New metal is in, and it's nice and flush. The main thing is when you're doing this as you go, you have to keep one of your hands ungloved because you got to feel with your fingertips right along those edges to make sure it's actually smooth all the way across. So now, I did remember I got a rust hole here. And further, I've got a really cruddy corner in here that I just need to get all that out of. So, perfect opportunity to bust out a piece of scrap and take it over to the old stomp a rooney here so we can get this nice and square so first things first just for fun here we're going to square up the stock make sure my fence is accurate here so let's get it just past the edge of that shearing uh knife and okay and let's check for square oh yeah all right i can live with that so let's get it down to size then eh gonna need Oh, let's see. I'll probably cut it right around there. Doesn't have, this isn't rocket science, not super precise. Get into about there. Little stompy. Amazing. Took a second to round over that edge. And as you can see, gonna be replacing a lot of bad, very tired metal in there. All right, that's basically tacked in. Here's our bad metal. Hold on by a single weld now. Come on, get out of there. And so we're removing this. This is just like future proofing. I mean, I probably could have left this in. Could have been good for, who knows, 10 years. But eventually, that stuff's gonna rot through. Better to have that. So with the fun fitting and tacking done, I can go ahead and completely weld these up. Okay, all welded in. Now I need to go in with a angle grinder with a grinding stone on there and knock those weld beads down. All right, pretty well knocked down, got everything kind of worked in. I'm pleased with the fitment of this patch panel in there with the original metal. Looks pretty good, nice and straight. All right, cutting off the door bottom was a great success, and I'm starting to drift a little bit, and I, I'm just gonna switch gears here for a bit. So this and this are the reinforcement member that runs from like the top of the cab down, or I'm sorry, from the top of the door down, and provides some reinforcement for the sheet metal where the hinges bolt on. This bottom where it kind of hooks up, sort of curves around the bottom of the door. Now. Unfortunately, all the ones that I have, except for this one, which I've extensively rebuilt and reinforced, are completely rotten out. So I'm gonna, I've made a template here that is um, a reverse approximation of, of this side here. And I'm gonna start rebuilding this one now. Made my outline, reinforced it with tape, and now I'm gonna cut this out, and put it on a piece of metal, cut it out in the shear, and get to work. Okay, I can live with that. Let's make it into metal. All right, plug weld holes are in. Both sides are primed in, weld through primer. And let's weld this thing on. Okay, to start, I'll weld it in. Plug welds, dig it. All right, so I made this surface on the other part. Now I gotta make this surface. And to transfer that measurement, I'm just using a tape template. All right, successful tape template. Got a nice part here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tack weld in place, pleased with how this turned out. Okay, we're starting to take shape here a little bit, gang. Pretty pleased with that. I got my little notch, my little bevel there, my little bend there to match this one. 
And I got one more side to add on, so I'll make another template and get that rocking. Well, 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 would you look at that? Plan come together. Kind of surprised how this came together. I was a little concerned about building this, but it actually, um, actually did okay. Got a little bit of trim up to do, a bunch more welding to kind of finish this out. Uh, but it is, um, it's good to go. Okay, they're all welded up. Now off to the grinder and we'll get these things cleaned up. All right, this first one looks pretty good. Knocked down the high spots. I got a little bit of welding to fill in. I'm leaving it somewhat globular on the inside because it doesn't matter. The main reason I'm even knocking the high spots down on this, because you won't see this part, is so that as I'm bebopping down the road, if I've got a couple, like a big weld bump, like on here, that the sheet metal doesn't push up against that over time and create little dents or create damage. So, and also just good workmanship, honestly. But first one down, I'm using my old blacksmith vice portable unit here that I made up to uh, grind these with stone. Right, so I made a tape template of these holes, flipped it over, you can see the sticky side is facing us because these are kind of opposite each other. Now I'm just gonna use a punch, mark my holes, drill them out, Bob's your uncle. Here's a little metal working tip for you. So I've got my holes drilled for this hinge plate to go in. And when it's aligned, the top two are aligned good. The bottom ones are a little off. In fact, this one here is real off. So what I'm doing is, what you can do, I've only partially center drilled this one hole. If you take a nice sharp cold chisel and you put a nick in the direction that you want the drill to move. When you drill it further, the drill will bite on those nicks and drag the drill over in that direction. I'm gonna put one more in, see how it works. So, got this hole centered up. The, the, the drill walked in the direction of the nicks. I've got a little bit of an issue with this one. It needs to go down and to the left just a touch. Let's see what we can do. So I got my cold chisel, hammer, and I'm just putting a little 45 degree notch with this blade down basically like an arrow in the direction that I want my cut to travel or my drill to travel. Let's give one more beefy hit there. And so now, let's see, can you see it? There's a little nick right there. Okay, pretty good effect on target here. This one hole is still a little bit far, um, a little bit far to the right. What I can do is once I fully drill these, if it's still not right, um, I can just make it oversized and use a washer on the other side. You know what they say, if you can't make it perfect, make it adjustable. So the enemy of good is better. So instead of just obsessing over this part that you won't be able to see, I feel it's very strong and I'm happy with it. I'm going to pull back a little bit of the sheet metal, create a little peekaboo opening in here so I can readily weld this piece back into place. Ah, that should facilitate welding chrome paint job looking epic thanks to the eastwood rust encapsulator stuff is fabulous i use this on the entire frame of the truck check out that video if you haven't seen it already yeah all right metal's dry enough never seen anybody do this before but it seems like a valid idea i cut this off with a cutoff disc so now why not use a cutoff disc as a spacer to set the gap so everything lines up perfectly when i put it all back together time to get welding all right, one door with its structural member. Securely fastened, lovely. Moving on. Before I take these door skins any further, I've got some whammies that I need to, to repair uh, where I cut through accidentally and then these doors got bent and they're a little bit out of, out of shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and start straightening these, get them welded back up, do it on both doors because like I said, they're both kind of jacked up. So let's get that done. Easy check off first thing in the morning. Should be pretty easy. I've got the edge pinched so that we know that the edge is aligned the way it ought to be. And I can just fix that bottom half. The top is good. This is all good exactly where it needs to be. This just needs to come out. All right, all the welds have been taken care of on these accidental cuts. Everything's been smoothed over and looks pretty good. So I can officially check that box, repair the sheet metal cuts. So that's done. And then next we're gonna install the door support, the hinge support on the green door, which is the gray door, as it were. So hinge support is gonna be going in place. Thusly, get that welded in. I'll show you when it's done. Nice, got everything tacked in place here. 
And one thing I've been doing or trying to remember to do when I'm putting these new pieces in is to just take a second with a straight edge and make sure that everything is actually aligned. And I think I've got pretty good alignment here as far as, you know, as far as that goes. And now I am a little concerned um, just because of the way how different these are. Uh, you can tell this one on the right here has got a little bit more kind of twist to it. Uh, whether that's correct or not is um, a little concerning. I think this one being as flat as it is, I feel like that needs to be more like this. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of um, tweakage and see what we get. All right, been doing a little bit of fit up. I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit that before I painted these things up, these, these inside door supports, I didn't actually do any test fitting with the, uh, the other panels they're gonna be interfacing with. And this I've just been beating on as you can see, unfortunately, it's kind of buckled a fair amount to get to the shape that it needs to be. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some relief notches in there, fold the metal back out, re-weld so it'll be nice and strong. Same thing was the case on this red guy over here. And this, this particular inside door support was the one that I modeled that one, or I modeled this one off of this. So unfortunately, this one was wrong. Um, and same story, got a bunch of buckles that'll need to be reinforced. And um, so I guess that's up next. I'm a little bit disappointed in that, but it is what it is. It needs to be done right. All right, just had a nice break. Realized that I'd actually knocked off three of my, um, my punch items. Next, I wanna finish welding and fabbing the green door inside, which is um, this piece right here, as it were. The last piece that needs to be fabricated is this sort of offset. So I've gone ahead and made a section um, in my brake and actually trued it up using a piece of formed metal that actually goes over top of this when it's done. So I actually captured that edge, kind of used this as a uh, form tool and just hammered it flush so it worked just right. Anyway, this is good to go. Next is going to be actually installing it. And I figured, I was trying to think of ways to, to actually figure out how to put the curve in the right spot, but the easiest way is just to put it on the truck and install it right where the curve needs to go itself. So that's what we're gonna do. In order to properly fabricate this little missing section here with the piece I've made, I really got to get this properly fitted into place on the door itself. So when I went to go fit this on, I noticed a problem. This, um, this inside door, it, the front of it is totally flat, right? So it needs to be flat and level with this, with this straight line here, right? So what did I do? I cut a relief cut. And when that relief cut is closed, we've got a nice flat that the door should fit in. So I'm going to go ahead and weld this up next. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Did a bunch of fitting, did a bunch of welding. I've got the piece in. Now I'm going to finish up this flange edge where the actual door skin will kind of tuck over and grab onto there. So great progress though, man. I'm moving. All right, before I go any further, I've got two more repairs I have to make on this door bottom. This hole here. And this nice little rotty section right here made up a little piece for that using the jump shear, which is turning out to be extremely useful. I'm going to do a cut and butt weld on that. I think I'm just going to fill that with weld using a little uh, copper backer. So let's get that done and I'll show you the result. All right. So I patched in that hole that we looked at before. All those little uh, ruster spots I've gone and patched. I've also gone and um, like I've talked about before, I use the electrode from the MIG welder to uh, sort of probe at some of these pity type spots like, like these guys right here. I actually need to hit those as well. But just trying to preemptively attack those before they rust through on me, you know, 10 years down the road. But um, what I'm doing now is I'm going through and I am welding up all these welds on the inside. See, I've got this seam that kind of needs a little extra reinforcement like I've done there. And um, I'm going to go ahead and finish that up. And then this panel should be ready for knocking down these welds. And then it'll be ready for installation, essentially. All right, check this thing out. Knocked all these welds down. Got everything kind of smoothed up. It's not perfect, but it's where it needs to be for this next step. I'm going to get a little bit of a primer on this thing so it doesn't change color on me and become rusty again. See you after that step. Always love this part. You know, this does two things. It'll keep the part, the part from rusting any further, and it shows all the little imperfections much more obviously where I need to tune some things up. All right, next step, I'm going to, where is that panel? 
Ah. Going to do the same treatment of this one, and I'll show you what I'm done. All right, not too bad. You can see there's a seam right along here. There's that corner seam where it wraps up, where this is new, this is new, all this is new within the last day or so. That whole flange is brand new. It's kind of hard to tell though, but that's what you're looking for. And this is still, this hasn't even gotten any kind of bondo, which you only need a little bit because it's all metal. God darn. Just like that, it's been four days. So, got a lot done. Um, back into a rhythm with the truck. It's been 14 months since I put a, pretty much laid hands on this thing and now we're moving in the right direction. It really does feel great for me to get back into this. Doing it for me, doing it for my kids, doing it for all you guys out there who've been hounding me like, oh, when are you gonna get back to the power wagon? Every week for the past 14 months. I appreciate you, I hear you, I've been seeing the messages. Um, but we're back boys and it's a beautiful thing. So thanks for watching, see you guys soon.